Hello and a warm welcome to Advanced Audit and Assurance, your path to AAA excellence. If you are gearing up for the AAA exam previously recognized as the P7 exam, you are at the right place. In this video, we will walk through the past exam question. Get ready, we are not just studying the past exam question, we are unlocking the secrets to decoding the scenarios, finding numerous points we can make in the exam to gain marks easily, masterfully drafting answers up to the examiner standards, and skyrocketing your chances of success in the AAA exam. Stay tuned for game-changing insights that will transform your approach and elevate your ACCA journey. Let's go ahead. In this video, we will be discussing March 2020, question number 2, part A. I hope the lectures are helpful to you and you are able to gain insights on how to solve the exam paper and how to attempt the exam paper up till now. Now let us continue with the part A of question number 2 for March 2020. Let's read the question. The question tells us it is 1st of July 20x5 and you are well aware that we are always marking the dates from my previous lectures you are well aware that the dates are always important and we need to mark them as soon as they occur in the paper. So it's, it is 1st July 20x5 you are in the audit department of Saul and Company is the audit firm of Saul and Company the, Good, the Goodman group the group is an audit client of your firm and the audit for the financial year ended 31st December 20x4 is in the completion stage. So you are made aware that this is the, uh, you know, uh, the Goodman group is your audit client and Saul and Company is the audit firm. It is 1st of July 20x5 today and you are working on the audit of the previous year end 31st December 20x4 for the group which is almost at the completion stage at this point of time on 1st July 20x5. So it's nothing difficult yet, nothing so uh, you know difficult to absorb. So let us read further. Uh, the group which is not listed, so it's not a listed company, installs and maintains security systems for businesses and residential customers. Alright, so it's the group's business is to install and maintain the security systems for businesses and for residential clients, right? Now the requirement part A, using the information detailed in exhibit number 1, so we are provided with exhibits which have further details for the question. Discuss the implications of the fraud for the completion of the audit and the actions to be taken by the auditor. Six marks. You see, these are easy six marks. You have to discuss the implications of the fraud for the completion of the audit. So this means that Exhibit 1 would be giving us some information related to fraud occurring at the company. Uh, that has occurred at the company and what actions need to be taken by the auditor with regards to the fraud right now let us come to the exhibit number one and read the detail provided for this fraud over here so see exhibit number one it tells us materiality over here then it tells us information related to fraud over here in which case it further tells about development cost and so forth but we are not interested in those because we are just asked about fraud in part A. So let us discuss part A fraud only over here. Right? Now see materiality. Materiality for the audit of the group financial statements has been determined to be $400,000. Alright, so this materiality level is provided to us in the question and we will be utilizing it further in the question because it tells us in, at the beginning of the exhibit number 1 what materiality for the audit is. 
right? Now see the fraud. The group finance director has informed the audit team that during the year a fraud was carried out by a manager, Mike Trout. Let us mark his name. Maybe we will use it in future. In one of the group's procurement departments. Okay. So it's the procurement department where this manager was employed, Mike Trout. And he has done a fraud or he has carried out a fraud during the year in this department. So, till here we are just informed and this was information was provided to the audit team by the finance director. Alright. So, that's so nice of finance director to inform the audit team that there was a fraud carried out during the year and the person who carried out this fraud was a manager of the procurement department named Mike Trout. Now, let's read further. The manager had raised fictitious supplier invoices and paid the invoiced amounts into his personal bank account. Okay, so the manager had raised fictitious invoices and he had raised that amount into his personal bank account. Right? Now let's read further. What does it say? When questioned by the group's finance director, Mike Trout confessed that he had stolen dollar forty thousand from the group. All right. So see, it's not the auditor who has done the investigation; it's the finance director who did this investigation, and he uh, questioned Mike Trout regarding the fraud he carried out. And Mike Trout has confessed. It says confessed that he had stolen dollar 40000 from the group so it's no one not the it's not the auditor who has questioned it's not any other person or it's not the police or any other legal department who has questioned mike it's the finance director who has questioned mike and mike has confessed that he has stolen dollar 40000 from the group all right so we know that how much was the fraud fraud was for 40000 Right, and we are given the materiality level of 400,000. So, this means that the fraud which was known to the group or to the auditor, or uh, that was of $40,000, is immaterial as determined or as compared to the materiality found out of 400,000. I hope I am clear with this, and I hope you are also clear with this. Now, let's read further. Each and every sentence in the paragraph in the case is important. Let's read one by one, right? We did up till now. See, the finance director asked the audit team not to perform any procedures in relation to the fraud. Why did he tell the audit team not to perform any procedures in relation to the fraud? Don't you think there's something fishy over here? There is something fictitious over here. Why would the audit team be, inf uh, you know, instructed by the finance director to perform or not to perform procedures? It is the audit team who has to decide whether they should perform further audit procedures on this 40,000 amount or not. It is supposed to be the audit team who is, has to decide, not the finance director who has to instruct the audit team. You are clear with this. So, it is not supposed to be the powers of the finance director to guide the audit team on what work has to be done and what not to be done. So, see, the finance director asked the audit team not to perform procedures in relation to the fraud and as the amount is immaterial. Okay, he says that the amount is immaterial, so the audit team should not do any further procedures on the fraud amount told. Right? Is that clear with you? He also stated that the financial statements would not be adjusted in relation to the fraud. Okay. It's further the audit, uh, finance director is stating that the financial statements will not be you know affected or will not be adjusted in relation to the fraud of $40,000. Because he thinks it is an immaterial amount. Right. Okay. So, let's move further. 
The only audit evidence on file is a written representation from the management acknowledging the existence of the fraud. All right, see, 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 see. Now, how the things have turned around? How the things are turning up? up. See, it's the finance director who has informed the audit team that there was a fraud uh, which was being conducted during the year or which was carried out during the year. And it's the finance director who is instructing the audit team not to perform any further procedures as this amount is of dollar forty thousand is immaterial to the financial statements. Materiality level determined at dollar four hundred thousand. All right, and then further, it is the uh, uh, written representation which is uh, from the management that they acknowledge the existence of the fraud. So the management is aware of the fraud over here in the company. And they have provided a written representation, but this is the only evidence on the file. Nothing else. No other document. No other. Uh, no other photocopy. No other copies. Nothing. So what should be done? I hope it's clear with you that there is something wrong going on. Right. But now let's read further. This is a written representation. Let's mark this, and a list of the fictitious invoices which had been raised by the manager provided by the finance director. Okay, so the only audit evidence is the written representation from the management acknowledging that they know there is a fraud conducted in the company, and they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the audit team has got fictitious invoices. A list of fictitious invoices, not the fictitious invoices. It's a list of fictitious invoices. Which had been raised by the manager, but this has been provided by the finance director. Why is the finance director involved in providing the evidence to the audit team? Why isn't he letting the audit team perform their work themselves? He is telling the audit team not to perform any further audit procedures on this fraud of dollar forty thousand. Then he is providing the list of fictitious invoices to the audit team, uh, which would be totaling up to dollar forty thousand, and it's the finance director who is taking a keen role uh, or a major role in providing this information to the audit team. Don't you think this is something fishy or this is something suspicious? You are right, obviously. The finance director could be a part of the fraud, fraudulent activity taken or carried out by the manager. It could be that the finance director has also been a part or is also actively being a part of this transaction, but the or face of the transaction is being shown by the audit uh, by the manager, by the procurement department manager. It's not the audit uh, or no, it's not the um finance director who is being shown as a fraud a fraudulent person in the company i hope you are clear with this thing right i am sum summing up things together also so that you can recall the points and you can you know memorize uh, keep them in mind Now see the audit working papers conclude that the fraud is in material and no further work is needed. So it's the audit working papers which are concluding that the fraud is in material and no further work is needed. So see now we have just discussed the exhibit number one, fraud and materiality, right? And now let us come back to the uh, requirement so that we are able to you know draft our answer. Now see, part A, part one. Using the information detailed in Exhibit Number One, discuss the implications of the fraud for the completion of the audit and the actions to be taken by the auditor. Now that you have read what the fraud was about, what was the information provided to the audit team by the finance director, and the all the information about it, the fraud. That the total of fraud invoices was forty thousand dollars that was provided by the finance director again. So, don't you think it could be, uh, you know, activity of hiding 
or of uh, minimizing the loss, uh, minimizing the fraudulent activity carried out by the finance director. He could be trying to hide the total or like the actual amount of fraud which was carried out. He is trying to cover up the manager. Don't you think so? Then what else could be done? Obviously, we need to take the that list of invoices. We need to uh, inspect those further. We need to investigate further to find out whether this forty thousand is the actual amount of fraud which was carried out, or whether there is an, any other or uh, evidence, or is there any other fictitious, uh, you know, uh, entry in the books of accounts. to find out that whether there was any further loss or further fraud or not right then what else could be there since the audit team was being instructed not to you know investigate further or not to perform any further procedures it could be an act of hiding by the finance manager again by the finance director again right now what do you think it says uh, first we have just told the implications that this is to, was the reason or this is was the issue and then it says and the actions to be taken by the auditor the what actions do you think do the auditor take it six marks we have to discuss um 1.5 marks each so we have to discuss four points over here so what could be the actions you can take or what could be the actions taken by the audit team the first action would be for the investigation right to find out the level of fraud to find out that this evidence is sufficient or not this provided by the finance director to the company or to the audit team right and what is uh, there could be uh, you know further reporting responsibility by the audit team or for the audit team yes this could be a course of action again because uh, to the The audit team could uh, report to the appropriate level of management. Given that this represent, there was a written representation by the management, but we are not aware about which level of management provided this written representation. It could be the uh, an inappropriate level of management which provided this written representation to the audit team. But there could be further, uh, you know, duty to uh, inform the higher management or the upper management. or maybe if the upper management is also aware of this fraud and uh, there could be a duty on the auditor to uh, you know uh, to express or to inform outside parties or outside governing bodies about this fraudulent activity taking place in the company and further further what further that there could be a uh, you know a confidentiality act also coming in that the confidentiality of the company should not be you know exposed to the other party so the auditors need to uh, report to the external bodies with the real confidence and they should first take into account the legal implications based on informing any outside party before that right so we have discussed the points we can easily make in this question part a1 Now let us begin drafting our answer. So uh, we would begin by telling the materiality first. So we could say that um, if rather let me mark it first. Question number two A. If the fraud was Actually, for dollar forty thousand, right? Then the audit team, uh, or rather, we can say if the fraud was actually for dollar forty thousand, given the materiality. Of dollar four hundred thousand, then the audit team is correct 
in the premise that the fraud is immaterial to the financial statements. We have we have told about the financial statements and the materiality over here. Right. Now what else could we do? Uh, we could tell that the auditor has not made any uh, work then on this forty thousand to get yet. So how would we define that? We would say um, there is no evidence. Mm, there is no evidence gathered by the auditor, right? to support the assertion of dollar forty thousand being the total amount of fraud. Right, we are told that this figure does not uh, you know there is no evidence gathered by the auditor to find out that this was the actual amount or not this is perceived or this is implied that this is the correct amount now um, we can say that the, the discussion between the finance director and the manager cannot be relied upon, right? It cannot be relied upon why it cannot be relied upon because it is in, in appropriate or insufficient evidence. We can say uh, the discussion between the finance director and the manager cannot be relied upon. As this is an insufficient evidence to base the uh, audit report on, right? Now, what else can we draft further? Let us come back to the exhibit number one over here and let's try to pick up points from here. We can say that this, uh, the finance director asked the audit team not to perform any procedures this could be an attempt of you know uh, trying to conceive or try to conceal the facts of further audit fraud right so we can say that we can draft this point now that the finance director uh, could be involved in the fraud as he is attempting to uh, minimize the suspected scale of fraud, right? Why? Uh, by deterring the audit team we are telling the how now the, by telling the audit team not to perform further audit procedures right we have told this over here now uh, we can further say, tell uh, what uh, we can further make a point for this one we can say um, the audit team should approach right should approach um, 
the audit team should approach this matter with an attitude of professional skepticism right why because the finance director has asked the audit team not to investigate further mm, not to investigate further right Rather, we can say not to investigate further as he may be covering up the larger scale of fraud. Right? Now, the, let us come down. Uh, what do we say? Let us see. Now see over here what courses of action we were required to tell up. We have discussed all these points one by one in the answer we have drafted right now. And now let us come to the you know actions that the auditor should take. We just discussed those right now. We can say that the possible actions the auditor can take are. All right. So in the first paragraph, we'll tell one point, and in the other one, we can tell another action, right? So what we would do is we would say that um, independent investigation uh, independent investigations. shall be carried out by the auditor why to obtain sufficient because he told that this is insufficient evidence appropriate audit evidence and you need to know that you need to use the audit jargon in your exam answer to gain marks easily because until and unless you use the audit jargon you won't gain marks remember uh, the independent investigation shall be carried out by the auditor to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence relating to the amount or evidence of what or sufficient evidence of what relating to the amount of the fraud right we completed the sentence. I hope you are clear with this. Further, we can say uh, we can talk about this adjustment point over here. The, we were told that this uh, requires no further adjustments, right, in the financial statements. Yes, this one. He also stated that the financial statement should not be adjusted. We can make a point for this one too. We, in the course of action again. Right. In the course of action, we can make another point. We can say... Um, over here, we can say... Let me draft first. Um, the group finance director seems unwilling to make any adjustments in the financial statements. Mm. Right. Now we can say that uh, what uh, point I am coming up with is uh, the finance director seems unwilling make any adjustment in the financial statements 
right? Uh, in the financial statements. Which could be, which could result in the financial statements being materially misstated. Right? I hope you are clear at this point. Now, let us draft another course of action about reporting to an external body and reporting to the higher management. You can say that. Um, the auditor or the audit team should report uh, to the appropriate to the appropriate level of management right or the audit team should report the fraud to the appropriate level of management, right? And what we could say is further um, to the appropriate level of management to inform those uh, with the inform those with the so I am very duty to prevent and detect fraud. Right? We are not aware who is responsible for the primary activity of or primary duty of prevention and detection of fraud, but we are stating this point over here. Now what further we can say? We can say that um, The case tells us the management is aware of fraud, but if the auditor, uh, but if the auditor considers this to be a significant matter, they should report to an external body right they should report to an external body but or rather not but they should report but sounds are informal they should report to an external body considering the legal implications of the uh, re external reporting given uh, the confidentiality of the of the issue, right? The auditor should consider in uh, reporting with an external body, but they should report considering the legal implications of the sectional reporting and considering the confidentiality of the issue. Alright, so I think this is enough for this 6 marks question. We have uh, made, done the drafting of this answer, we have done the uh, drafting in a proper manner and it's a case specific drafting which will gain us professional marks but this is not the only part which will gain us the professional marks it's question number two as a whole which will gain us five professional marks in the exam and over here we have just covered part a part one there's part a part two part a part three and there's a part b coming in afterwards so we need to answer in a logical flow that is part a1 part a2 part a3 and then part b for question number two and we need to communicate well we need to analyze the information well, we need to discuss properly and we need to communicate well. So we have done as much as was required over here and let us uh, go to the part A2 and part A3 
in the next videos coming up. So see you in the next videos. Towards the end of this video, you need to remember, greatness doesn't happen overnight. It's the result of continuous effort, boundless curiosity and a thirst for improvement. Investing time in these videos and engaging with past AAA exam questions is an investment in the brighter future you're shaping up. Keep your focus sharp, your learning continuous and your eyes focused on your goals. Best of luck as you navigate your studies. May your dedication lead you to success in the AAA exam.